Hi guys, welcome back to another episode on our YouTube channel. I'm Carl Ketchan the resident YouTuber for the Best Students Physician Society. And today we are doing another video, another round table discussion. But this time we're talking about how our experiences have been being med students within the pandemic. So I've invited some of my colleagues, they're all fourth year medical students with me. And we're going to be discussing this whole topic about the adjustment to med school in the, the pandemic, some of the pros, some of the cons of being a med student during the pandemic. So, with me today, I've got Tamsin over here. I've got Erin over here and I've got Kumar over here. I think I just wanted to start actually with you, Erin, and ask you, what does a typical day in your life look like now? Um, well, I'd say it's a lot more relaxed than online stuff because there's no pressure that I have to be in a lecture hall by 8 o'clock because mm -hmm. the lecture is going to be standing there staring and waiting for you. So, I typically, depending on what I've, if I've got something on that day, it's just normal lectures that I wake up about 7 have coffee, stay in my pajamas, <laughs> and then start the day around 8, and then just pace myself out there because I find lectures taking a lot longer to do online than a work person. Yeah. Yeah, but it typically takes, especially Mondays, when we've got like 8 lectures that. Yeah, Mondays are the worst. <laughs> what are some of the pros of being in the pandemic or learning within the pandemic? Um, I'd say the fact that you can work at your own pace. Like, for example, if you had an in person lecture and you don't understand, you have to go home and figure it out yourself, kind of thing. Whereas here, yes, you know, you don't have that in person interaction, but you know, pause it if you need to, go back if you need to, you know, all of those kind of things I definitely say is a pro. Um, the fact that I don't have to sit in traffic for like two hours a day is <laughs> wonderful. Right. Yeah. Um, so obviously, like waking up at seven instead of five thirty, you know, it does wonders. <laughs> um, yeah, I'd say those are the two like the biggest pros. Yeah, I think like Erin said, for me, it's really that flexibility in time. So I found that I can start, like some days I'm just, I just don't feel like starting the gym at 7 or 8 or whatever. And I start at 5. You know, <laughs> some days I literally start at <laughs> I will start at 5 and then I will still get my work done, you know what I'm saying? Because I can do that any time. Uh, for me personally, there hasn't been like many pros. Mm -hmm. I think uh, the one thing about working online like you said, it's flexibility, and I feel like I have more time on my hands personally. So initially, when we started the lockdown last year, I was able to take time to like sort myself out and put myself in the right frame of mind before, you know, focusing on my lectures and things like that. Um, and then let's start, start speaking about the cons. I feel like this is okay. <laughs> <laughs> so let's start with you. Uh, my, <laughs> what are some of the cons of the pandemic? Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's the stress. It's the constant stress of knowing you have to do work every day and without having that specific um, like timeline yeah, in place yeah. to like keep you sorted out because obviously I am a very I'm a big procrastinator. <laughs> so without that order of I have to go to lectures from here to here and then do this from this time to this time, it tends to fall back. I tend to fall back mm -hmm. very quickly. And it's also the constant stress of COVID, you know, and the impact it's going to have on the people around you. And, you know, I need to worry about my parents or my granny or somebody else. So it's more than just the academics now that's on playing on my mind. Well, for me, the biggest annoyance, I'm a very, I plan, love planning, lists, organization, absolutely love that. So when Monday morning comes and you're missing four lectures, oh. they haven't been uploaded yet. <laughs> I literally, I call them meltdown Mondays. Mondays are always <laughs> my worst. Yeah. So like that, trying to adjust to fit in. Whereas if we went to class and the lecture didn't pitch, we can write that lecture off and yeah. say, oh, it's not happening. Yeah. Whereas now, come Friday, I have to go back and check, oh, they've actually uploaded the voice of a PowerPoint today, now I have to do it on top of all my other lectures. So it's that constant catch up and going backwards. And sometimes, see, even in the last week of the block, and they're like, ah, oh, lecture from week one has been uploaded. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. The same way you like to plan, I don't like to plan. And therefore, the planning of the UB usually was wiped out. So now that I can't sit in the planned lecture <laughs> with planned times, now I actually have to be like Ryan. You actually have to do this because you've never done this lecture before, you know. Whereas back then, you could just sit there and then the lecture would happen, whether you like it or not. You know? 
But also for me, um, I, I don't want to say that I'm an extrovert, but I do require social interaction. And I do require, for me to digest information properly, I need to talk about that stuff. And I'm just sitting in class and you don't understand something, like a turn to person next to me, like, yeah. do you know what's going on? Because <laughs> <laughs> now when you don't understand something, it just feels like you don't understand yeah, something. Yeah. You forget that like, literally like 50% of your class also doesn't understand that part of your day. Studying in the same environment the whole day, mm. like, you know, campus, you know, you go to med school, you go to a lecture, spend time with your friends, go to Olives, whatever, oh, but it's a change in scenery. And the other thing is, like, I personally feel that the quality of lectures online as well has, like, plummeted down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because where in a lecture, the person has to be a lot more interactive, the person can't just, like, speed at five million, meters per second <laughs> through a lecture but now the lecture actually people are going to be like sorry can you please slow down or can you please explain that fact again or this doesn't make sense now you don't have that you just have this lecturer who is a pro at his field but doesn't understand sometimes that we are not there what we're going to do is we're going to delve a little bit more into some of our struggles uh, within the pandemic so i think the biggest thing is really our profession being like, put into the spotlight, both negatively and positively. Let's start with you. How have you dealt with understanding the importance of your, your profession you know, during this time? I think because it's been put in the spotlight, it's really been emphasized. And I think because of the pandemic, obviously it's a very individual thing, but you, or at least for me, I look at it and I'm like, okay, I really, like, this is a big reason why I'm doing this. It is to help people, it is to be that, that support if it would be kind of thing um so it either reinforces the fact that you want to do what you're doing currently and like reinforce the fact that that's your goal at the end or it could be a sense of okay no thanks mm. i'm done now <laughs> and i think a follow-up question from what she said for all of us is did the pandemic lessen or heighten your desire to be a doctor for this one um, I don't think so, but I think it definitely highlighted the health inequalities, especially in South Africa, in terms of the private and the state sector, in terms of doctors and PPE and just stuff like that as well. Um, but also for me, a little bit off your question, but I, I heard you mention heroes. So obviously now doctors and nurses and just healthcare professionals in general have been idolized and friends can still be heroes, which is a good thing, but it also then takes away the human side. And people forget that doctors are so tired and yeah. so drained yeah. from this. So they just get all of all these superhumans being able to work and save lives. It also takes away that this is absolutely exhausting, mm -hmm. having to do all of this and in PPE and block hours, your patients are dying left, right, and center. And the you know, just yeah, you know, it just takes away the fact that doctors are humans as well. Yeah, that's one thing I feel about that Townsend and Ed said because obviously, since we put on the spotlight, it almost makes you want to welcome you personally. It makes me want to, you know, help out more, do more, you know. Uh, be part of the community more but at the same time it's like what are you going to get out of it at the end of the day because yes it's it's great and all that you're being labeled a hero but who's really caring for you at the yeah, end of the day yeah. i mean all the doctors are busy with the patients and who's going to talk to you you know but i think an important question and an important follow-up question is how do you adjust it you know to to this have you adjusted because that's also a very you know some people have some people haven't so let's start with I think I've adjusted pretty well. Um, as I said, when things are uploaded, then I can get a bit. <laughs> but otherwise, on a whole, I'm more introverted. So, not seeing people every day, like, well, besides people I'm close to, I'm fine not seeing our whole class all the time. Um, <laughs> some people more than others. <laughs> 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 I've had, like, being able to do things for all time, and I do. I mean, I used to do nap on lectures when they were in person. Yeah. <laughs> Now I can take time, I can go walk outside when my brain's tired and so I enjoy that bit of freedom as well. I just feel like um, I would be capable of a lot more if, if, if things were normal, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I do get a lot of people are doing a lot better than they would have because of like online, but I'm on the opposite side of the spectrum. I would probably like holistically, not just academically, mental health wise, you know, physically, everything would be doing better. If I wasn't like, if, if things look like this. The thing is that we also need to remember that our lecturers are also predominantly doctors yeah. and they are also like fighting within the pandemic, trying to save lives, you know. And we're currently in our first week of GIT, um, 
passion test on track. So how do you feel like all the way from the beginning which feels like a century ago now? How do you adjust it? Wow, okay, that was a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> um, honestly, I have mentally, I feel much more, much better. Because, you know, having gone through last year and then making it through last year, mm -hmm. I feel like I'm capable of doing it again. Mm -hmm. yeah. But obviously, the situation was still a bit different. I mean, yes, it was still online, but the tests were also online, mm -hmm. and that kind of gives you a bit of leeway. But I've learned what to take out from where and what's important from each, like, you know, lecture. Mm -hmm. So I feel in that sense, I've totally come to find peace in what we have to do. I would say um, the thing with third year as a whole, if you look back at it, like yes, we had just started the whole online thing, but like Aaron said, things tended to be more structured than they are now. Mm -hmm. Things tended to work better than mm -hmm. they do now. And I think overall, I mean, this is an individual thing, but last year was more interesting than it is for me now. Yeah. Like I'm not <laughs> sitting learning about why the foot moves, the <laughs> bone moves the foot, like mm -hmm. no. You know, so the motivation, I think, in comparison has decreased a lot. And the will to try and do it, I feel very drained, even though it's still the beginning of the year. But I think I've adjust, adjusted in the sense that I've learned to just accept. Mm. I'm just like, if nothing's there, nothing's there. If I want to have a break today, I will have a break today. Like, mm. you know, and last year I wouldn't have done that. Yeah. Even like times it's all just like that. <laughs> but I think I've positively adjusted in terms of mental health. My mental health is slightly better than last year. <laughs> but then, in terms of academics, last year was not interesting. So, like, all right. So, how do you feel your ability, or the pandemic specifically, has affected your ability to be a skilled clinician, practical abilities? Well, like honestly, I'm so upset <laughs> because, like, this is one thing that has really like piqued me, I guess, during this whole situation is that. Going forward, they obviously see the importance of being a competent doctor, mm -hmm. but nothing has been put in place to make that happen. Yeah. So like we, and besides just the clinical skills, but also uh, going to the hospitals. Like last year, we went into the hospital once, and now we're going in every once a month, basically. You're not getting that patient interaction. You're not getting the chance to actually practice your clinical skills in a setting where you're going to need to practice. And from what I've heard from previous years, it's already a lot to be thrown into that setting. And now that the presumed you know, lack of skills, a lack of interaction, it's going to be even harder for us to to, to get into that space and try to be feel prepared. Okay. You know, I'm really worried about it. We the year that's been disadvantaged the most. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. And I mean, even our clinical methods at the beginning of the year, I know they try to adapt and do the best they can. But I mean, because everyone was so busy, and I mean. We got there and our patient was busy being resuscitated. So we were like, now what? And we had to wait for the doctor to come back because she had been busy working. <laughs> and we've been sitting in the corridor doing nothing. So it's just that whole adaption of we don't know what we're doing, but we expect it to do it right ourselves, but we don't have the confidence to do it by ourselves because we've never done it before. Yeah. Um, so, what have some of your coping mechanisms been? In terms of clinical skills? Well, in terms of pandemic, first of all. Um, I would definitely say learning to be okay with how I'm dealing with things, like kind of the whole self-reflection mm -hmm. thing, but also spending time with those people that I know are always going to be there for me. Like, you know, if you need a call a friend, if you want to go for coffee, you know, it's still having the social interaction you need or within reason. Mm -hmm. um, so I think those have been the big ones. And then having the time now, instead of driving to uni, having the time to go for a run, mm -hmm. to take it off for a walk, to do whatever you want to do, you know, I think that's really so my COVID mechanism is always like initially generally to be with to be with people you know i love hanging out with friends or my family and the COVID obviously adapted a bit to initially mm -hmm. it's not the best COVID mechanism but i've turned to like um i always used to but now much more i watch a lot of tv and a lot of tv shows <laughs> just because it's, it's kind of offers me escape from the world we currently live in you know mm -hmm. i'm living in another character's life where right? everything's funky dory <laughs> or, you know everything's fun so that for me is in my life i also i like going to just take a walk outside and just be outside away from my laptop and that's all going i've got really nice little roommates they're very cute so i go have tea with them go to scrap them <laughs> Um, and then if I'm really in a bad place, like me crying is a, like a release, so I cry, get over it, and get 
get back to work. <laughs> and then I've also got, it's a new thing, it's called Diamond Dart. It's like paint by numbers, but it's like little dots. And I just sit there doing this and it wipes my mind completely. <laughs> I'm <just> so therapeutic. <laughs> but how do you guys deal with the mundaneness of, of this life? I don't know, for me, like you guys have diff differing opinions, but it's okay for you. So yeah. for me, it's been difficult, but how do you guys deal with it? Do you feel like it's my day? Um, well for me, the biggest thing is because I'm a great ex, I'm away from my family and that. So I think that's the biggest issue for me. Because I mean I don't mind sitting and just working through stuff by myself. Like if everything's organized and lectures well done, <laughs> I find it quite therapeutic just to sit and work. Mm -hmm. Um so that besides mine, but for me it's the family, my family is so far away, I'm not going home that as often and that. So then I take the home frames and find a distraction and do stuff like that. Um, speaking personally, I have anxiety, like just full blown. So to be by myself is to be with my thoughts, and that's just the worst yes, for yes. my needs. So this time I've had to deal with a lot of my intrusive thoughts, mm -hmm. and that's why I tend to stay away from like things that make me anxious, mm -hmm. i.e., work. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and that's why I watch a lot of TV. But yes, it's so mundane. Like I enjoy being around people, and my friends are on the other end. Joburg, mm -hmm. which makes it almost impossible to make plans, not to mention COVID restrictions yeah. everywhere. So the way I've been dealing with this mundaneness, I guess, is what well, initially I didn't. I just, <laughs> you know, got into a depressive mode, and um, but now I've realized that I need to go out there. I need to make plans with who's around me. I need to speak to my parents as much as I can. Luckily, they love me. Well, I love with them. <laughs> 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 uh, so I realized that. I need to take the initiative to go out myself, you know, even if it's just to get out of my room and even if it is by myself, just to get out of the setting that brought about that one day. It's, it's been a struggle for me to get through the okay? game. I think for me, dealing with that mundaneness is always by talking to people that don't find it mundane. Because I'm like, so what did you do? <laughs> <laughs> what does your day look like, you know? And then try, like, not trying to be like that, but just also trying to just. You know, take some notes from how they do things. Um, and then, just a closing question, I think, for all of us at the end is what would you advise the third year version of yourself entering this online age of education? What would you advise yourself? I would say just don't put so much pressure on yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, you are working at your own pace, you don't need to compare yourself to what's happening on the group chats and why are you so far behind if you are, you know, just kind of making sure you're okay mm -hmm. and the thing is obviously if you're not okay how do you expect yourself to get through what you need to get through i would tell myself you know when you're feeling down find help or go to something speak about what you're feeling and also it's okay to to, to not do well to give and fail mm -hmm. you know you always have chances to pick yourself up and Yes, a lot of people in your class are going to be doing well and so good. But you are your own person and at the end of the day, Mars is not what makes you a doctor. It's the kind of person you become at the end of this job. And one day you'll be things, no matter how long or it takes you. I think the biggest thing for me is when things aren't uploaded and I get so worried like, oh I'm gonna be left behind and but hang on. Nobody's got the letters and because yeah. you're so alone, you forget that other people are also going through the exact same things you're going through. So to just remind yourself that everyone's in the same boat, everyone doesn't have those letters and that. I think also like Kamara has said, marks aren't everything, you're mm -hmm. living in a pandemic. Mm -hmm. So just doing what the best you can do for that day is pretty mm -hmm. great. If, and I think the biggest thing for me personally that I tell myself is, if that lecture is not just, if it's just not happening, like you, you dare and you're just like, I'm not learning anything. I'm struggling to just get through it. Just stop, breathe, and then tomorrow is another day. So on that note, I'd just like to thank you guys so much for coming through to this YouTube video. We're all very different people. We all work very differently. And I think everyone can just take you know, just one tiny bit of information from everything that we've said today. So thank you, thank you, thank you so much for coming through to this. Please don't forget to like, share, subscribe and comment. Um, if there's any part of a YouTube video that you'd like to see in the future, just comment it down. If you have any comments, if you have anything that you'd like to relate to or not like to, but if there's anything that you relate to and you just like to share, um, just comment in our, um, in our channel below. Also don't forget to follow us on Instagram.
Instagram, not Facebook. All that information is gonna be present in the description below. Thank you guys, cheers. Everyone has a unique smell, except for identical twins that smell the same. The acid in your stomach is strong enough to dissolve razor blades.